When you think of Bible memorization, does the word elder come to mind? Maybe not. Um, most of the time I would suspect we would think of children reciting verses to receive awards or getting credit towards a summer camp uh, for the fees. Uh, we may think of young believers being discipled in a parachurch organization or at a university ministry. And memorization is not included in the list of qualifications for elders. But I would like to submit to you that there is a benefit both to the elder and to his ministry. Would it not make sense, uh, just on the surface of it, that elders uh, continue doing the very things that we encourage children and new believers to do? Well, of course it does. Not only should an elder be involved in regular Bible study and meeting with the saints, the believers, and, and, and spending time in prayer, but I, I firmly believe and am convinced that an elder, spiritual leaders, should be involved in memorizing the Word of God because I believe memorizing is a key to meditating on the Word of God. Now we have good biblical principles uh, for this, a biblical precedent I should say. When we look at the spiritual leaders that are identified in the scriptures, and I use as my first and probably my most important example, and that's none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 4, as he's beginning his ministry, just after his baptism and before he begins publicly uh, uh, teaching, uh, the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness, and the scripture says, to be tempted. And after um, after 40 days, the, 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 uh, the enemy, Satan, comes and tempts him three times. And three times Jesus resisted him. And we might say, well, of course, he's, he's the Lord. He's God in the flesh. But you notice that when he, he resisted Satan, he quoted scriptures in Matthew chapter 4. Three times he quoted scripture. He didn't need to say, wait a minute, let me get out the scroll. Uh, well, certainly people didn't carry around scrolls in those days. It would be way too big and heavy. Uh, they didn't have uh, digital devices like we have that we can keep in our pocket. Um, but Jesus quoted from memory the Word of God. He could have simply said, Satan, be gone. It would have been uh, done and over with at a simple command. He who said, let there be light, and there was light and created the world simply by speaking it ex nihilo into existence, could have spoken Satan right out of the picture here. But Jesus being the master teacher that he is, he modeled for us. He invites us by recording it in the scripture, the spirit does, he records it for us, Jesus powerfully using the scripture to ward off the temptations of Satan. He wasn't just showing off, but he was using it as his primary tool. And Jesus being the master teacher, if that's what he did, then it makes sense that he's modeling for us, as all teachers know, modeling is one of the greatest ways of teaching something. He modeled for us the value of being able to quote scripture, which implies knowing it by memory, not just saying the scripture says something like this, but being able to use the very words of the scriptures that we have learned. So I take this as if it was important for Jesus to know the scripture by memory, then it's important for all Christians at every stage of life, including elders. And for elders, memorizing scripture gives us an example to model uh, Christian living the way Jesus modeled it, as a person who knew scripture and had internalized it. Well, not only do we see this in, in Jesus, we see it in David, who internalized scriptures. He speaks of the righteous man in Psalm 37 and verse 31. He says of the righteous man, the law of his God is in his heart. He, his steps do not slip. He further elaborated this theme when he wrote Psalm 119. You, you remember that Psalm. It's every verse except for one or two or three verses of the many, many verses there uh, all contain a reference to the Word of God or the statues of the Lord or the precepts. In, in, in verse 9 to 11, he says, How can a young man keep his way pure? By keeping it according to your word, with all my heart I have sought you. Do not let me wander from your commandments. Your word have I treasured in my heart that I may not sin against you. If David recognized the need to internalize and to know the word of God and to treasure it in his heart, how much more do we do? Now you might have noticed, well, he's talking to young men. They, they really need that. But I can't imagine David in his older life not wanting to continue to treasure in his heart the word that he so loved. There's the example of Solomon, David's son. 
He says in, in the book of Proverbs, he refers to my son. He says, he says, keep my commandments and live and my teachings as the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Um, Solomon picked that up from David, must have been. He saw the example in, in his father and himself, he saw the wisdom of internalizing the Word of God and in his word, writing them on the tablet of your heart. We see the Apostle Paul, when he wrote about renewing our mind in Romans chapter 12, after I gave the first 11 chapters of some tremendous doctrine on the, the doctrine of uh, righteousness and justification, he says, uh, therefore, in verse 2, he says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. That's in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. De, uh, Paul recognized that the only way to change the way we think and to renew uh, uh, our minds, the only way we can resist conforming to the world is by the wholesale transfusion of the Word of God into our lives, the renewing of our mind um, by the Word of God. He was committed to it. He says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, he talks about taking every thought captive to the obedience of of Christ. Well, Paul really wasn't unusual in that. Uh, David and Solomon, um, you know, they set the precedent, you know, many, many years be before, roughly about 3,000 years ago from our time. But we see that the time of the, the, the way the scriptures itself was written was to encourage the memorization of, script, uh, of itself. Psalm 119, for example, where he extols the word, many have recognized that in the original Hebrew language, uh, the, uh, the psalm is divided into eight verse stanzas. And each stanza, every line in the stanza, stanza begins with a letter of the alphabet. So example, the first eight verses of the first stanza uh, all begin with the Hebrew letter Aleph. And then the second eight verses begin with the Hebrew letter Bait. These are memory devices. Today we call them uh, alliterations or a form of alliterations where things are lined up in a certain way to aid people's remembering them. Israel did other things as well to encourage the internalizing and the memorization of scriptures. Deuteronomy 6, 8 says this, You shall bind them, referring to the word of God, the law, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontals on your forehead. And the idea was is they would symbolically put them in little boxes and, and tie them onto their forehead. Not that somehow that was just going to magically go into their brains, but it was a way of reminding them of the importance of the Word of God on our minds and that we need to have them impressed there. Carson and Moo, uh, in their in their book, The Introduction to the New Testament, have shown that the, the, uh, the concept of memorization and the commitment to that has carried over into New Testament. And they, they say the importance of memorization in first century Jewish society is undeniable. And we are justified in thinking that this provides a sufficient basis for the careful and accurate oral transmission of the gospel material. They go on to write, recent st uh, study of eyewitness testimony in the Greco-Roman world at large also generally confirms the value and accuracy of such testimony. In other words, the church, after the time of the, um, the apostles, uh, after the resurrection, the church itself continued to spread the word through memorizing it and conveying it and reciting it back and forth, which when you understand it, it's until the word of God was completely written down and, and circulating in a wide way, not everybody had access at all times to the actual written letters of the apostles or the written uh, gospels. So it was conveyed word of mouth, but the accuracy of it is, has been remarkable because of the commitment in the culture that day to memorizing the things that they wanted to teach. So there, uh, there's a case still for memorizing the Word of God and being able to recite it back and to use it readily at our fingertips. Let me just quickly give you some benefits to memorizing the Word of God. First of all, it allows us to, uh, allows the Word of God to richly dwell in our lives, as Colossians 3.16 says. 
uh, memorizing the Word of God and repeating it and rehearsing it as we're going through the process of memorizing it is in, in reality it's giving the Holy Spirit time to work on that, our lives with that verse. It's like he's kneading it in. He's like dough and he's mixing the ingredients so it as we spend time dwelling on it as we're trying to commit it to memory it gets mixed into our whole life. It fosters, memorization fosters continued spiritual growth. It's, it's a humble thing, but as elders, we need to recognize we have not arrived completely at a transformed mind. We still need to grow. We still need to learn. We still need the Word of God to change us deeply. The meditation and the memorization of Scripture encourages us to absorb the Scripture, not just to know it with our minds. We gain greater insight as we roll it over and over in, in our gray matter. Uh, scripture in our memorization enables us to resist Satan's temptation. Remember, if Jesus used the scripture, how much more do we do uh, need it? Uh, especially when we consider that Jesus was more powerful than Satan. He used the scripture to deal with him. We who are nowhere close to the power of Satan, we have the word of God which the scripture says is sharper than any double-edged sword. We need to have the scripture readily. We may say, well, I, I got it here. If I'm tempted, I just take some time to find it. But James says that once the thought is there, it takes root. And once it takes root, it gives birth of a temptation. And once it gives birth, it leads to death. We don't always have time to find and struggle to, to locate verses that are, are needed as the situation occurs. So it enables us to be ready for battle. It makes scripture, memorization makes scripture readily accessible for counseling and for spiritual discussions. Uh, a friend of mine up in Canada who is a preacher and God has used him in a great way, he told me once he loves the counseling interaction where someone will be sharing a difficulty, his mind starts to go back through the files of scripture that he's already got memorized looking for scripture that's appropriate. And he says he so enjoys that because it's not his wisdom, he's trying to find God's wisdom to bring to it. And finally, uh, memorizing for elders models good discipline for everybody else. Let me give you a few tips just in, in closing here because it's easy to say this, how do I go about doing that? I, I like to use three by five cards and just write the scripture down. You want to be able to write it down so you can take it with you. Uh, memorizing is hard, but having a three by five card in your pocket, in your wallet, or taped to your dashboard, it makes it readily available, you can review it. Um, I would suggest taking select uh, um, scripture that deal with the situations you're facing with, maybe temptation, maybe assurance. But I would also suggest to you that you attempt to begin memorizing large portions of scriptures. I'm talking, for example, like a whole chapter or a whole book. I remember the first time I tried about 15 years ago to do 1 Peter, I thought I could never do it because my memory is not very good. But I found it was such an enriching experience, so fulfilling that I haven't looked back. It helps to set up accountability, but at the bottom it requires some discipline and a devotion to doing it. Just a few roadblocks I've encountered that you might uh, uh, come to. I mentioned earlier, I don't have a good memory. I, um, I, Alzheimer's is, is a growing problem in the world. I came to the conclusion, I want to be sure that the last memories, if I were to get a disease like that, my last memories would be of the Word of God. There was a time when I said, well, maybe I'm too old. You know, young people can memorize it much easier. Uh, well, my response, I concluded, was that um, I don't want my mind to become old. I want it to stay new. I want it to stay exercise. Recent research says exercising our mind helps us to retain our abilities to think clearly. Some might say it requires too much discipline. Well, qualification of an elder is self-discipline. Some say it doesn't fit in, uh, into my time schedule. That's why I say keep a three by five card in the pocket. Um, you can review it when you're in traffic, or you're in grocery line, or lying in bed. My conclusion, I guess, you can see my heart, is there's many benefits to memorizing the Word of God. Benefits for the elder and benefits for those the elder ministers to. On our website, we've got some added helps, some links to resources, and we even have a file you can print down onto three by five cards, and you can begin memorizing the book of 1 Peter.